Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Invasion. This is the Kingdom of Westeros versus Isengard at Kyoto. <laughs> Three different worlds colliding in Full Invasion right now. Trying out the uh, Northlander here. I usually go with the Lannister guards, but uh, the Northlander here has the bow and also a really cool two-hander weapon, the Sword of War. Let's probably turn off. Oop, hold on. Gotta turn off the. Okay, never mind. I'm sitting here fiddling around with the buttons, trying to turn off health bars, and I die. That's fine. I got like a kill, right? I got three. Take that. Three and one is not bad in some games. Not this game, though. A game like League of Legends, that may not be too bad. So I don't think I ever really talked about Warcraft in this series, the movie, because I actually saw it. I've seen it actually a couple times now. The last thing I think I talked about it in this series would have been my doubts about the movie and how I thought it may not be that great. So I want to talk a little bit about it, but my non-spoiler review is it's... Oh, hmm. Above okay. Hmm. Better than okay? It's not bad. It's not great. Better than okay. As a Warcraft fan, I would say it's good. Just because there's a lot of um, Easter eggs that you can kind of pick up. And as a Warcraft fan, I, I appreciated them. If you're not a Warcraft fan and you're just looking for a fantasy movie, I still think it's above okay. My main... So, yeah, that's that's it. That's above okay. So, my main problem with the the movie, I think, is the pacing of it. Is how fast it zips you to different places around um, Azeroth or around the world. It'll take you to the Dark Portal. Then it'll take you to, like, Dalaran. And you're like, what the hell is this floating city? Again, if you're not a Warcraft fan, you won't know these things. But if you are, you're like, oh, okay, no, this is Dalaran. So it's not... Like, the pacing isn't as much of a problem for people who know Warcraft. Because you know the locations just when they give you, like, that wide angle of the city or the tower or the place. You're like, oh, that's that forest. Oh, that's that place. So you know. But for Warcraft... Not Warcraft fans, I can see that, that uh, movie moving really too fast. Because it really will zip from, like, Azeroth Throne Room, Dalaran, uh, Medivh's Tower, Dark Portal, Azeroth uh, War Room. It, and it just, and it goes, like, boom, 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 boom. And so that could be, I think, a big problem for non-Warcraft fans. It was even, it was a problem for me, and I knew the locations, but I still thought that it moved way too fast. And I heard that it cut out about 40 minutes of the film to make the theatrical release. So... I think what would help the pacing out a lot is to see the actual director's cut. Hopefully, at some point, it'll be released on, you know, Blu-ray and DVD in a store near you. Because I think it just moved too fast. And I think some characters didn't have enough time to really form a connection with. Like, the whole... And I think this has been negatively pegged across the board. But the Garona and um, Lothar love story... Listen, I'm not saying it can't happen. The problem was, the movie didn't give any time at all for that to become a thing. At one moment, she was a prisoner. The next moment, she's allowed to walk around freely in the Azeroth throne room with the queen and king of Azeroth. She's allowed to walk up to them, and the, and the king's like, no, nah, it's all right, guards, it's all right, I trust this. This person who came from another world, whose people, as far as I know, are murdering ours. But it's okay. I trust this one because the plot told me to. 
so there's a lot of things about Corona. Actually, the only thing about Corona I didn't like is that she was able to become a friend to everybody way too quickly, I think. There wasn't any kind of scene or scenes to support the reasons why the king, the queen, um, would trust her. There was a cool part where the queen visits her in her, I guess, prison. Because even though they trust her to walk around the throne room and they're like, listen, we need your help and we trust that you're going to help us. They, uh, they still did put her in prison after that. But what was cool is that when the uh, queen was visiting her in the prison, Lothar was off to the side with his hands behind his back, but he had a gun in his hands that you couldn't see. And I was like, okay, well, at least he is still not fully trusting of this person who, as far as he knows, could be an enemy. Whereas everyone else seems totally accepting of her, which was kind of odd. Um, people are really trusting in Azeroth, apparently. But that was my only problem with Corona. Besides that, I thought she was pretty cool. Um, I think the love story was forced, and they just needed a scene or two to support the reasons why people just automatically trusted her. Maybe it's because they knew that she was, a, like, a slave? And maybe they're like, well, she probably doesn't like the people who held her captive. Uh, best character of the film was Duratan. By far. Um, really good. I thought... That Gul'dan, I thought, was really good. You really hated Gul'dan, and um, I don't remember the actor's name, but I think he did really well in that role. Um, honestly, you know, I think I, I think I may have liked the orcs more than the humans. And I was really worried about the orcs looking um, bad, or like not believable, like your mind would know that it's being tricked. But no, they look great. They look fantastic the entire time. Well... The main orcs looked fantastic. Some of the, like, background orcs, you can see not as much time was put on them, but that's only if you really look hard. If you're just casually watching the film and not trying to look for those things, then I don't think you're going to find them. The second, or third time I watched the film, yeah, I watched it a lot. Listen, I am a Warcraft fan, and even though I don't think the movie's amazing, it's still a fucking Warcraft movie, so I'm going to try to watch and support it. Um... But by the third time, I was looking for things like that. Actually, I was just looking for, like, Easter eggs that I had missed the previous times. Um, and I noticed that, oh, you know, like, okay, that orc maybe doesn't look as cool. Okay, that orc, I think, died in a battle earlier, and they're just kind of reusing the assets. But, like, that's fine. That's totally fine. This is just, you know, generic orc number 5,000. Like, who really cares about that? Uh, but for the most part, all the orcs that get FaceTime are amazing looking. And they are well acted. And my, uh, my boy Gromish Hellscream, I call him Grom. Uh, but I guess people call him Gromish now. Um, that's his actual name. He was in the movie a few times. It got me really happy, but he has no lines whatsoever. But I became a fan of Grom because of Warcraft 3. Um, I'm sure he had more of a role in World of Warcraft, probably. Even though technically he... I guess he was supposed to be dead by World of Warcraft because he dies in Warcraft 3. But I'm sure they had like a dungeon or something that went back in time. Like, yeah, hey, here's Grommish. And he has... He has a son that was popular in World of Warcraft, right? He became the leader of the of the orcs. Um, I don't play World of Warcraft. I don't know the names of a lot of those characters. Only by what I got through like Osmosis. But I think his son was the one who was like kicked out by Thrall, and then was the whole cause like the Iron Legion thing, right? Because he went back in time. I don't. Whatever. Um, Anyway, Gromish is in there a couple times, you can tell because of his hair, because of his um, tattoo and the axe that he carries, and I'm like, oh! And apparently there's some other Orcish War Chiefs that I didn't really know too much about that are also in there, but I really appreciated seeing Thrall in there, I was like, holy shit, that's th or not Thrall, um, well, actually Thrall too, but uh, Gromish, I was like, ah, oh, Grom! Grom! I just wanted to say something, though. Uh, but yeah, I like the Orcs more than the humans, I thought Lothar was pretty cool. Through most of it, I thought he was pretty cool. I thought the king was pretty cool. I thought Mediv was miscast, but even even so, I think that oh, what's his name? Is it Ben Foster? Is Mediv? I still think he did a really good job. I think he was miscast, but I think he still did an amazing job with that role. And that's saying something because I don't think he really looks or fits the part of Mediv at all. But yet he still somehow pulled it out. And, oh my god, I gotta restart my game. So yeah, Medivh. Um, when I was first watching it, didn't really... Oh my god, look at that Balrog. Didn't really believe him to be the Guardian, but by the end of the first movie, or the first time watching it, especially by the second and the, and the third time, I was totally cool with him then. So, 
at first it's a little, a little weird. Just, I didn't really believe it, but you come around because the acting is just it's really well done. And kind of tied to him, the magic in the movie is some of the most awesome magic I've seen in movies. Just in general. I thought they did really amazing with the special effects and just the, the movements um, of casting these spells. And they just looked awesome. Even just the transportation spell just looks really cool how they put it in the movie. It's, um, it's pretty... It, We've come a long way since the times of Gandalf's flashlight uh, on his staff. Although, I mean, that's a whole different, you know, world. But, um, man, it looks really cool. Match just looks so cool. So cool. Like, this light, uh, I don't even, mm, it's just, you need to see it. It just looks really sweet. Um, so what else is there? Uh, Cadgar? I think that was his name, right? He's like the wizard in training. He had some cool scenes. I think he's supposed to be the comedy, comedy relief a little bit. He's okay. He's okay. I, I didn't hate him. I didn't love his character. I didn't hate his character. I thought he was just alright. He has some, a couple good scenes. Yeah. Yeah, a couple good scenes. There's a sheep involved in one of them. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Little Easter eggs. Um, what other characters? We talked about Duratan, Gul'dan. Uh, Ogrim was pretty cool. He had uh, one really cool scene with his Warhammer. Um, of course, Baby Thrall, pretty cool. Can't wait to see him. If they do make a sequel, I hope they make a sequel. I don't think there's anyone else who really stands out. I mean, there's not really that many other characters, though. The fighting scenes, I thought, were really well done. They have one of the coolest parts of the movie where the um, the end fight and uh, there's a couple fights before that and they all look really cool. All oh, right, there's one more character, Lothar's son, who was so forgettable that I almost forgot that he was in the movie, even though I've seen it three times. Yeah, Lothar's son's in the movie. That's it. That's my review on Lothar's son. Uh, but yeah, the battles I thought looked really cool, really impactful, seeing the humans and the orcs charge each other. Uh, that definitely reminded me of the, one of the, I think it was the opening cinematic of Warcraft 3, when the two armies are, are running at each other and then Thrall wakes up, if you've seen that cinematic, if you played that game. There was definitely a scene that reminded me of that, and may have been a callback to there, because there seemed to be like a lot of callbacks. Medivh turning into a, uh, was it a raven? I think a raven or a crow, I can't remember which one he does in Warcraft 3, but that happens in this movie, which I think is going to be a callback to Warcraft 3. There's just so many other things. Apparently, Manoroth is in the movie, I've read, but I've still never been able to see him. Manoroth is one of those, like, four-legged demons with the wings, the really kind of fat, uh, the pit fiends, I think they're called. They would be in... It was in the Iron Legion expansion cinematic where Grom was fighting against him. He's a giant, <laughs> you know that guy. So I've, I've read that he's in the movie, but I have not been able to find him for the life of me, and I really want to. But I, I couldn't see him. Of course, there's that uh, Murloc in the movie, which it's like, okay, there's a Murloc. That's funny. And is there anything else? Fighting was awesome. Magic is awesome. Characters for the most part were okay or pretty cool. Um, just the pacing was, I think, my my biggest complaint about that movie. It's just the pacing, and just it seems like a lot of scenes are missing. So I'm hoping that that gets addressed with the director's cut. And if those 40 minutes are added back in, and if like hopefully that fixes it, because that was my only real main problem with the film. And I'm just really looking forward to the sequels. Like, of course, I want to get into the Arthas stuff immediately because I love the Lich King. That was Warcraft 3 stuff, and I really enjoyed that. I don't know if they're going to go that route, but judging by the fact that they have Thrall, Baby Thrall in the movie, it would seem like the logical next step would be his story of his rise, which is kind of in the Warcraft 3 era, which is around the same time that Arthas stuff happens. But that may just be too much. Like, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. There's so many things I want to see, but I don't think you could put them all in one movie. I don't don't want them to rush it. Ah, oh, man. So much cool things that they could do. And I heard that the movie has made a lot of money, so hopefully that 
will show that they will make another one at some point. Apparently we're moving on to something else. Oh, more cowboy stuff. Great. Great. I love cowboy stuff. Yeehaw. Oh, yeah, and Glenn Close is in the movie. For a minute. Two minutes, maybe. Just randomly. She's never really been talked about in any of the preview materials, I, in any review I've read. Like, I haven't really seen her name mentioned. But, yeah, she's just in the movie. And it was one of those times where, one, like, I don't even know why I recognize Glenn Close. Like, the last thing she was in... Well, she was in Guardians of the Galaxy. She was the leader of the um, the good good people I don't remember what their world was called, but that lady who was leading the good people in Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, that that lady. That's Glenn Close. And the only other movie I can really remember seeing of her was 101 Dalmatians, the live-action remake of that animated movie. And that was years and years ago. So I don't even know why I even know her name. It's not like I'm a huge fan of Glenn Close, but for some reason I recognize her voice. And when she starts talking in the movie, I was like, wait a minute, is that Glenn Close? And yeah, and she's just in there as this as this person just being for a minute and then she's gone and i'm like what 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 it's a weird cameo very weird cameo one of the coolest uh easter eggs though was how they snuck in the world of warcraft leveling up um effect like that gold effect that circles around you they snuck that in the film towards the end and i thought that was really well done because people who don't know warcraft won't realize what that is but people who do will totally get it and so easter eggs done in that kind of way where the people who would get it get it but the people who don't like they're not still drawn away from the movie like well what the hell is that um i think that's the ideal way that you handle those situations because i really appreciated when Cadgar leveled up, it was pretty cool. It was just so well done and and uh, incorporated into a spell that or like spell effects that are already going on. So one of my favorite Easter eggs in that movie, I think, was the leveling up. It's so cool. I think there was a call back. To, well, not, I don't know if you call it like call back, but a reference to the um, Infernals. I think there was a reference to that towards the end of the movie with that clay statue. At least a part of him kind of became Infernal-ish. I don't know if that was a direct... Like, Easter... Well, I don't even like an Easter egg, but... A reference or not, but... It kind of looked like that. That was pretty cool. Oh, man. I'm trying to shoot a cowboy. What am I doing? I'm not paying attention to this game. That's what I'm doing. fight between like with Lothar and Cadgar was kind of silly with that clay beast now that I'm thinking about it like that was kind of not that amazing there was a funny scene here and there with that part of the film but for the most part I thought that was kind of like eh eh it was really cool when, when Medivh did the transformation, though. That was pretty kick-ass. He just gets into that, that pool of whatever and just grows and becomes a demon. I was like, holy shit. And I really liked Medivh's last parts of... Uh, like Some of the last scenes he was in in the film. I really liked that part where he kind of comes out of it and it's like, I just always wanted to help people. Also... Speaking about Medivh again, I know I'm kind of all over the board here, but there was a scene with him and Garona where I didn't remember this. If this has always been a part of Medivh lore dating back to Warcraft like 2 and 1 and 3, but apparently he was insinuating that he's Garona's father? Did they add that in like World of Warcraft at some point? Or has that always been Medivh's lore that he was Garona's father? And then he's just like, and then peace. He, he kind of insinuates that he may be her father. Then he's just like, now get out of here. And I'm like, what? Wait, what? Did they just do that for the movie? Is like, just to give these two characters some kind of connection, or what's going on here? So yeah, there's a lot of lore that I am not current on because I don't play World of Warcraft, and 
I know a lot of things. Some things have been changed lore wise in terms of World of Warcraft as to what I knew even from Warcraft 3. And a lot of things have obviously been added. So that's just one of those things where I don't know if that's been mentioned in the game or if that's just like just some weird connection they made in the movie. Oh, but also what was really cool. What was really cool. How can I not even mention the final duel with Lothar and um, what is it? Blackhand? Is that his name? Is his name Blackhand? That war chief? I think it's Blackhand. That was pretty cool. Very quick. Very quick, but also really cool and very flashy. But what I liked more about that wasn't exactly the fight because it really wasn't much of a fight, but was the way that the orc still would. Um, respect Lothar because he won the duel so they weren't going to kill him and Cool Dan's freaking the fuck out like murder this man and everyone's just looking at him like you piece of shit this is our tradition we're not going to murder this man he won this duel fair and square and he's uh, they're all paying respect to Lothar as he's just walking through all of these huge orcs and including um Grom was there and some other orc chieftains were there paying their respects so I'm like that's just a really cool moment that these orcs, even though this dude's a human, they still are so value their traditions and their way of life that they will still respect this totally other race for killing their war chief, you know? And they just, I don't know, it was just a cool scene of him walking through and getting all those like respectful um, salutes from them. And he just gets on his griffin and just leaves. I don't know, I just thought that was a really cool scene. Seeing Grom paying respects to, to Lothar is pretty sweet. Am I the only one left alive? Yeah, I'm just gonna die. There we go. I'm not even paying attention to the game. Whenever I start talking about things, I don't pay attention to the video game. And I didn't realize I was the last one left and holding everybody back. Yeah, that was such a cool scene. Such a cool scene when you won that duel. It wasn't as like impactful as the movie wanted it to be, though. The actual duel between Lothar and Blackhand, because they, because again of that forgettable character, Lothar's son. The scene with him earlier in the movie that was supposed to set up like this. Oh, you know, he's gonna get revenge, but it didn't. Like he didn't care about Lothar's son. Therefore, this whole like rivalry between Blackhand and Lothar that was forcibly made up because of this stupid character of Lothar's son. It didn't feel impactful, it just looked cool. It was just a cool scene. There was really no like emotion behind it, other than the emotion of seeing the orcs give respect to, to Lothar as he was walking through everybody and not listening to Gul'dan when he said, murder that fool, please. Also, man, sorry, again, another duel, Duratan and Gul'dan. That was fucking awesome. When Gul'dan just takes off the robes and you're like, oh no, this guy is still just a an orc under there, you know, like he's, he's maybe doesn't look as impressive. Um, like he doesn't have as much muscles as Duratan, but like he still looks like a powerful mother. Like I wouldn't want to fight him in, in a duel, even though he's mostly a caster. Um, so that was really cool. I don't know. There, there's a lot of cool parts about that movie. Some parts don't work, but there's also a lot of cool ones. And I, uh, you know, I would hope that by the end of this video, you can judge that I would say you should watch it. Even if you're not a Warcraft fan, I would say give it a shot. But just be aware that it's going to have some pacing issues, and at certain parts of the movie, you're just going to be taken to so many different parts of the world that it's going to be a little confusing. Because they just don't really dwell in one place long enough to really explain what the hell's happening. It's just like, oh, here's, here's the... Uh, Magic Council of Dalaran. Okay. Anyway, I think I'm going to uh, end this video here. As fun as shooting bears is, I'm going to have to pull myself away from this. So thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, yeah, that was my review on Warcraft. Just a bunch of ramblings on what I liked and didn't like. Cool movie overall. Definitely not shitty, like I've seen a lot of critics pan it to be. They're like, oh, this is a terrible movie. No, I don't think it is at all. It has bad parts, but it has a lot of cool parts. But it being like unwatchable, like I was seeing, I haven't checked it for a while, but when the last time I checked Rotten Tomatoes, like the critic average was like 20%. But 
like critics have been so against a lot of movies that I've actually enjoyed over the years that I don't honestly really listen to them too much. Um, and if you know the critical reviews of this film are holding you back, I would say don't listen to them. Give it a shot. See if you like it, because you probably will like at least something about it if you are into the fantasy genre at all. So yeah, anyway, thanks again for watching, everybody. I will see you all uh, next time. Take care.